A couple times a year, I volunteer at a student-run health clinic that provides health and social services for low-income people. There are two locations. One is here at the Los Angeles LGBT Center, or here at the Salvation Army in Hollywood. At these clinics, licensed physicians supervise medical students to ensure they're learning how to practice proper medicine and to make sure patients are getting the same quality of care as if they walked into a dedicated clinic. It's a really cool setup because these organizations also provide job training, housing resources, food, and clothing to people who need it. But there's one big problem for me when it comes to getting here. See, Hollywood is nine miles away from where I live in West LA, and if you take the most direct route to get here, which is Santa Monica Boulevard, it can take 20 minutes, wait, 30 minutes, wait, 40 minutes, wait, 50 minutes, wait, 60 minutes? That's nine miles an hour. Why does it average nine miles an hour to get here? It's probably because there's bumper to bumper traffic all the way from West LA through all of Beverly Hills and well into West Hollywood. So if I know I'm going to be stuck at every red light and even some of the green lights and it's going to make me feel like this, I'm going to do this so I can relax and do this. But it still sucks because we're all still stuck behind this. My name is Nimesh Rajakumar, and when you bear a striking resemblance to Justin Timberlake, it can make it hard to go out in public. But if there's a direct public transit line that takes me where I need to go, I'd much rather take that than to drive here. I hate looking for parking. I hate paying to park. I hate knowing that the longer I'm parked, the more I have to pay. But most of all, I hate driving in traffic. And the traffic to get from my side of town to Hollywood is so bad that Google Maps sometimes recommends taking this circuitous 20 mile route through the valley to get to Hollywood over the more direct 9 mile route. The issue here is obvious. There's not enough room in Los Angeles for everyone to commute at the same time using their own personal vehicle. As you sit in your car, you're taking up an area of about 2 feet by 3.5 feet, or 7 square feet. But you're also driving around four empty seats and unused cargo space. And you have your own personal internal combustion engine to lug all of that unused space around. If you're driving a Camry like mine, you're taking up 96 square feet in order to transport your 7 square foot self. If you're driving an F-150, the best selling car in the US, you're taking up over 120 square feet. Most people don't need all of this to go back and forth between their home and their office every day. And I think given a safe, reliable, and dignified alternative, a lot of people would take it. If you're driving yourself back and forth on the same predictable route, a personal vehicle just seems like the wrong tool for the job in a crowded city. During rush hour, buses aren't guilty of being inefficient uses of space. And by not driving, or not being able to drive, these people are doing everyone else a favor. This is 30 people passing by a bus stop in a bus. And this is 30 people driving by a bus stop. Look at how much more space and how much more time it takes to transport an equivalent amount of people in their own individual car. Wait, why is everything coming to a stop so soon? The light couldn't have turned red already. God damn it. And for a lot of people, it's not a simple issue of deciding to take the bus or deciding to drive. For a lot of people, they can't drive because of health issues or financial issues, and for them, it can be really disruptive to not be able to get around. The elderly population is one such group whose lives are disrupted by an inability to get around. With worsening vision and cognition, it can make it harder for older people to drive, and if they can't drive, they lose their social ties. If they lose their social ties, they become more lonely, and with increased loneliness, you have increased rates of depression. Now, loneliness can mean different things to different people. Hey man, you want to play some one-on-one? -on -one? 
which can make it hard to compare one person's loneliness to another's. But by breaking the idea of loneliness down into some key specific sentiments, like what the UCLA Loneliness Scale does by asking about feelings of lacking companionship or feeling alone, you get a more objective way of comparing loneliness among individuals. One study out of Kobe University in Japan found that if adults over the age of 65 had access to public transit, their loneliness scores were significantly lower than people who didn't use public transit. And by encouraging intellectually, socially, and physically active lifestyles, taking public transit can actually improve cognitive function in the elderly. In 2006, the United Kingdom started providing the older person's free bus pass, which allowed people to ride free on public transit throughout the country once they reach age 60. A study out of King's College in London from 2018 measured cognitive function in riders before and after the bus pass was introduced and found that the average cognitive score for public transit users was higher than for non-users at all ages. Even as a doctor, the lack of public transportation in LA makes my job that much harder. Some people with certain medical conditions like seizure disorders need DMV forms filled out to medically clear them to allow them to drive. But that puts me in a position where I have to balance how safe they are behind a wheel with how they're going to provide for themselves without a car. I wish I could tell them to take the bus until we get their medical condition under control, but in LA, that's not an option for most people. And this doesn't even get into the people who get sick because of their commute. Like the mall worker whose blood pressure is hard to control because his 10 mile commute takes an hour each way. Or the nurse whose anxiety is hard to control because she commutes three hours a day in traffic. Not to mention this is all a result of failed housing policy that puts affordable housing away from job centers. But that's a topic for a different video. Regardless, it doesn't have to be this way. If there isn't enough room for everyone to commute at the same time using their own personal vehicle, I think the solution is pretty clear. We need to prioritize vehicles that transport multiple people. Or prioritize more efficient vehicles like scooters, motorcycles, and bicycles, but that's also a topic for another video. This isn't a foreign concept to Californians. We've had carpool lanes on freeways for three decades now. But let's be real, this hasn't incentivized anyone to carpool. It only benefits cars who happen to have multiple people in them anyway, and everyone still gets stuck in traffic. But these days, we have so many more tools at our disposal to help people get around better. On one end of the spectrum, there's the idea of discouraging people from driving alone in their vehicles by placing tolls in congested roads and increasing the toll prices as traffic gets worse, a strategy called congestion pricing. This has worked in other countries. Stockholm, for example, has reduced traffic by a lot with congestion pricing. Now, congestion charges were introduced in Stockholm in, uh, on, on January 3rd, 2006. And the first picture here is a picture of Stockholm, one of the typical streets, uh, January 2nd. The first day with the congestion charges looked like this. It's now six and a half years ago since the congestion charges were introduced in Stockholm, and we basically had the same low traffic levels still. That was Jonas Eliasson, Swedish professor of transport systems and former director of transport administration of Stockholm. His excitement about transportation is palpable, and one of the most important points he makes is that before congestion pricing went into effect permanently, it was initially passed as a temporary referendum. And when the referendum expired, and there was a short time before the permanent congestion pricing started, well... All of the cars were back again, and you even have to admire the car drivers. They adapt so extremely quickly. The first day, they all came back. And this effect, then, this effect hanged on. So 2007 figures looked like this. And if you're one of those people who likes to comment something to the effect of, But European ideas like that would never work in America. <laughs> I have one thing to say to you you actually might be onto something. In a place like Stockholm, it's easy to make driving more expensive when your metro system looks like this and your bike infrastructure looks like this. But LA's public transit system is really anemic at the moment and the bike infrastructure is non-existent. Not to mention, congestion pricing is pretty regressive financially. I can afford to live close enough to my workplace that I can just bike but most of our staff has to live far away in order to afford housing, which forces them to buy a car, maintain a car, and then fill up a car. So making it more expensive for them to come into the city on top of all that just doesn't seem fair. Since there are a few practical alternatives to driving in LA, I really doubt simply making it more expensive to drive would discourage people from driving. Just last year, gas was $8 a gallon. Just when you thought it was safe to fill up, Californians are getting pummeled at the pump. 
But all that did was incentivize people to post stickers on gas pumps. Thanks, Obama. On the other end of the spectrum, there's the idea of giving buses their own dedicated lanes, which is probably the best solution to getting people quickly through their daily commute. Just last year, San Francisco opened a dedicated bus lane on its busy Van Ness Avenue. The project is one month old now, and the numbers are looking pretty good, and so are the reviews. The buses, although they have to stop for the lights, but they don't get tied up in traffic, so they're just going smoothly up and down Van Ness, and it is much faster, and the ride is smoother. Muni says just about everyone, including drivers in their new designated lanes, is finding the new arrangement to be an improvement. Bus run times are even better than expected. This bus lane has been so successful that Atlanta's transit agency, MARTA, came all the way to San Francisco to make their own video showcasing it as an example of all the advantages that bus rapid transit brings to a community. Here in Venice Avenue, this is a big arterial. It is six lanes wide. It was always jammed with cars and it was a mess and we knew we needed to fix it. Although this transit lane looks kind of empty right now, it's actually moving far more people per hour than any of the other general purpose lanes alongside of it. Because these buses carry up to 150 people on them, uh, that is more cars than are on this entire length of highway from one end of San Francisco to the other, in one bus. The rest of this video is an excellent explainer on the advantages of bus rapid transit, the associated pedestrian improvements that come with it, and even the advantages of bus lanes over rail. Honestly, this video is so good, just stop watching my video and watch that video instead. It's really that good. You've gotten through 90% of my video already, you get the point, just watch that one, there's a link in the description. There is clearly a demand for some way to get around LA without having to drive. And with the proper investment, we can provide a better experience for those who ride the bus and a safe, dignified experience to reassure those who are on the fence about it. But until then, I'm just going to have more experiences like this where I get so frustrated waiting on the bus that I just get off, get on my bike, and blow past traffic. The evening that I shot this, I must have saved like 20 minutes on my trip just by biking past all of this. Now imagine if there was a lane that just let the bus go through, how much faster that would be. Oh, and did you guys watch that Marta video yet? Because if you're still on the fence about bus lanes, you should check it out. Link in the description.